Hello guys, so today I want to do a review on this Jack Richardson 16 Artist Semi Moist Watercolor Set. I got it at a local art supply store. I think it was seven to nine dollars. I can't remember quite what it was. I do believe there was a 12 pan version, an eight pan version, and maybe a six pan version. Yeah. I got it because of that purple color there. I thought it was really cool. Um, I've used Yarka St. Petersburg paints before, which I do believe the Jack Richardson are a rebrand of actually. Um, it has a little brush in there. They're hairs, but I don't think they're natural hairs, but they're not like nylon bristles like in a cheap Crayola set. It comes with some really nice colors that are unusual, I guess, like the purple and that buff titanium kind of color, but also comes with your more standard watercolor colors, like an ultramarine kind of color and a lemon yellow type color and a lizarin type color. Okay, so I'm gonna swatch them now. Um, I'm kind of confused as to how they decided to lay this thing out. It's kind of strange to me because it doesn't really have a color like scent. <laughs> You'd think that it would be like chromatically arranged, but it is not. Um, I don't really see any granulation, so I don't I can't say if they're pigments or not, but then again, not all watercolor paints granulate. However, the reason I bought this was because it was next to uh, Yarka St. Petersburg Little sets. Uh, I'll add it in the video here. There were a few of those, and those said that those had natural pigments. And I have actually used those before back when I had no idea what I was doing in watercolor, so I don't quite remember how those work. But these are semi-moist, and so are the Yarkas. And, like, if you get semi-moist watercolors, they're always really good because they re-wet. And re-wetting, I mean, you need them to re-wet. I don't understand why people like the thirsty watercolors that are, like, dry and chalky and gross. I'm like, why? There's no reason for that. So I also, I just want to try them out because they were cheap. I mean, like, maximum $9 for this set. That's not expensive at all. And I just wanted to check them out. Um, as far as I know, Jack Richardson is, like, a, an American rebrand of the Yarka set. They are made in Russia, so I do think that the paints might be identical. Um, in the future, I'll see if I can pick up the Yarka, like, student set. That's in quotations, because it says artists on it, but I'll see if I can pick that up and compare them. Um, yeah, so to test these out, this is actually a self-portrait of me. I just wanted to use some really non-traditional colors, which is why I picked this up in the first place. Lord knows I have enough paints. But, um, like, that purple just really inspired me. It's like a semi-opaque watercolor, that purple, although there are transparent colors. I'd say the whole top uh, layer is transparent colors, and then there's a white, which I used um, in some of the colors here because I like that milky look in the base layer for this piece. But the white, the purple, that... Uh, buff titanium, like, sandy color. Those have opaque, uh, they have white in them, so they're semi-opaque. Um, the paints, they're semi-moist, like I said before, and they're actually really fun to use. Like, unlike some other student sets, I didn't really feel so much like they were low quality, and they were pretty fun. Although, they didn't really dry down fast as I'm used to, but that might also be because I'm using a different kind of arches paper than I usually use. It came in a pad, it's kind of different. So, that could be the paper's fault. So, I'm not going to blame 
the paint for that. But they re-wet nicely, they mixed well, although I will say that it, it they kind of have, they do have a milk, like a, not a milky, a smooth, nice text, uh, texture when you're mixing them, which I do like. But none of the colors are like really dark. They're not very vibrant. So if they do have pigments in them, there's definitely a lot of filler. And I could kind of tell that when I was painting with them. Um, yeah, so if I'm going to say what the colors in the palette are, if I was going to give them like actual watercolor names, I'd say that the black would be like, it's a neutral black, so maybe it would be a Mars black. It's kind of warm. And then there's, I'd call that a phthalo blue, a phthalo green or a viridian, um, a hooker's green, a cadmium yellow, a, uh, what would that be? A, a scarlet or a cadmium red, although it's not opaque or semi-opaque. A alizarin, a um, Indian red kind of color. Um, the purple, I don't know, maybe it'd be a lilac. I've never used a tube paint or an artist quality paint that was that color, so I couldn't say. Um, there's a magenta kind of color. There's a ultramarine kind of color. There is a cadmium orange type color, a lemon yellow, buff titanium, and then a burnt sienna type color. Although for this piece, I really only used um, the alizarin, the cadmium kind of color, the ultramarine color, the phthalo green, blue, phthalo blue color, and the purple color, and the white. I think I listed all the ones I used. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a portrait of me without my glasses. I wear glasses most of the time. But I'm like, I don't think I've ever painted myself without my glasses on because I cannot see. But I had a picture of myself that I had taken. <laughs> so I'm like, might as well do that. Um, I would recommend these paints. Um, I did a review before on my channel about a $5 Royal and Lang Nichols set that I got. Just save, like, if you have five bucks, get a smaller version of this set. Or just save five, like, it's weird to me that you're trying to paint if you only have five dollars to spend. Because, like, paper and brushes and everything will be more than that. But, like, get this set instead of that set. 100%. Like, you can't even put the Royal Lang Nickel tubes into a palette without them cracking and falling out. It's just... Super frustrating. Um, I will say that it's kind of patchy, as you can tell, um, the painting. Although it was pretty fun. And, I mean, they are different paints, so there's a little bit of that. But I, it was fun to do, for sure. And I did notice that um, as I was building up layers, there's like a glossy sheen on some areas that have more layers and more pigment. Like, it has too much gum arabic in it. I do feel like there's actual pigments in these. I don't know why. It's just the way they react with the paper. I am using arches, like I said. So I'm not using a cheap paper. So I kind of know how things react with that. Um, I think that's all I would say. I would recommend this. It was fun to use. I'm going to... Uh, definitely do some more sketches with it to see how it reacts. This was just like a first pass. I'm not like fully sold on how it turned out, but it was definitely fun to do. Worth it for sure if you're a beginner. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do a video eventually, who knows when, about like worth it tools for beginners that maybe are a little different than all the typical ones that you see on watercolor YouTube. So yeah, this is about to be wrapped up and uh, thanks for listening. Hope that this was entertaining at all. <laughs> Bye.